Good morning friends of Burnt River Ranch. Welcome to another video. This morning I'm just out here doing chores. It's almost April. It's Good Friday today and we are getting ready for another influx of babies. <clears throat> Our cow, her first due date, her first expected due date is April 1st but uh, considering she's got like no bag to speak of, I don't think that's gonna happen. So my guesstimate would be uh, about three weeks from then. So closer to the end of April is when I'm expecting her to calve. So once she calves, obviously we're gonna be really busy again, milking her every day. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm excited to see what she has for a baby and all that. And then my mare Hazel, my halflinger mare Hazel, is due sometime between the very end of April and the very end of May. So kind of somewhere in there. From what I've researched, horses due dates are a little bit more vague, I guess. They're not as precise as some other critters. So we'll keep a close eye on her starting at the end of April for sure and probably before then even. But she's definitely looking very pregnant. That's her there. She's boss of the herd. And this is Nora. She is our registered Sharplana Nats dog. And there's Rune. He's also the same breed as her. Anyways, they are expecting puppies mid-April. She's starting to look pretty round in her belly. So I'm excited to see her puppies. This has been a big, big goal of ours is to have Livestock Guardian Dog puppies, registered Sharplana Nats puppies. And it took a long time to get here. A lot of health testing, a lot of genetic testing, making sure the dogs are good working dogs and have good temperaments and all that for what we need them to do to be good livestock guardians. You guys pee on everything. Ugh. You know other animals eat that. But yeah, she's looking around and she is definitely a lot more calm and reserved and not expending her energy as much lately she's letting rune take over a lot of the chasing the coyotes away she still barks but she prefers to not expend her energy any more than necessary which is fine she's an extraordinary guardian dog she's always been excellent okay So this girl here, we've had her a little over a week now. And she's pretty nervous still. She doesn't really want to be our buddy yet. Um, I don't really blame her because our first real interaction with her was separating her from her mom and throwing her in a kennel and putting her in the strange pen and then um, giving her a couple of injections for dewormer and vaccination. So she's a little bit on edge. But she's slowly kind of coming around to the idea that maybe we're okay. But she's fairly timid. Anyways, I think I've decided on a name for her. I like old lady names. If you know any of the rest of our sow herd, then you know I like the old lady names. So her name is going to be Agnes. So everyone meet Agnes. You remember her from my last video? She's an English large black gilt. She'd be, I guess, 14 weeks old now. I can't believe it, but our first batch of baby piglets of the year are going to be weaned this weekend already. And they will be going to new homes soon. And so we have four batches on the ground and four more to go. And our next group of sows is due fairly soon. So I will show you guys when they have babies, but let's take a look at these other babies that we have out here and, and see how much they've grown. So here's our first litter that was born. They are fighting their mom for the food now. And they must be drinking a lot of milk because poor mama is so hungry. You are not helpful for videotaking, Mr. Rooster. Anyways, these guys are growing exceptionally well. I'm very impressed with this litter. 
Like I said, this is a gilt. Well, I guess she's a sow now, but she was a gilt. So for her first litter, I'm very impressed with the quality of them and how well they're growing. There was no runts in this litter. She had eight, which is a great size for a gilt. And they're all eight really nice size, good looking piglets. Everybody's got decent confirmation and, and we're gonna be keeping back six of these guys for our butcher pig pastured pork program. Another litter here that's outside. These guys are a few days behind the last one. This was a slightly bigger litter. Um, she had nine that survived. She had 11 that were actually born, but only nine survived, which is normal. So nine, again, out of a gilt is an exceptional number. So I'm very happy with that. And they're all growing really well. They're all big, beefy, stocky little guys. And they're eating solid food really well now and drinking water and all that. So I'm very impressed with her as well. She's being a really good mom. There's a couple babies in here that unfortunately, I don't know if they got frostbite on their end of their tail or if they got stepped on or injured somehow. But some of them have little stumpy tails, but that's okay, it won't affect them in any way. Everybody's healthy otherwise. And the other girl, the other girl we haven't moved out of the barn yet, but that's on my to-do list. Her babies were a little bit uh, smaller and a little bit more touchy. So I wanted to make sure everybody was really, really healthy before I put them outside as it's kind of more temperature controlled in the barn, whereas, you know, the weather fluctuates quite a bit more outside. So it just helps me keep a better eye on them and make sure that everybody's really healthy and strong. So Anyways. this is the third litter that we had. These ones are out of our Berkshire sow, bred by our Hereford cross boar. He was half Berkshire, no, a quarter Berkshire, half Hereford, and then a little bit of Duroc in there. So these guys are growing really well now. We are keeping this one. This is a gilt. We're keeping her as a replacement for her mom, because her mom, I think, is going to be exiting our breeding herd this year. She's had a few difficulties with being extremely clumsy and not being super careful with her babies. Um, she had a litter of 13 and unfortunately four of them got squished or stepped on even despite being in the farrowing crates. So unfortunately it's a tough decision to make but it is her time to move on. So she will not be staying in our breeding herd any longer. Thankfully, the piglets that she did have have ended up growing really, really well. They had a bit of a, a rough start, I'd say. Um, they were pretty small and weak, but they've caught up no problem. And they're eating solid food really well, just like the rest. Like I say, they will be moving out of the barn ASAP into a pen outside. And then I will show you our last one. Right. So this is a pretty small little litter here out of a gilt. Um, she actually had, I think, a really good litter size. She had 11, I believe. But I don't know what happened to them. I've done a little bit of research and I can't quite seem to figure out what went on there. Obviously, my whole herd is vaccinated, so typically you'd think with that many losses, ending up with only five in the litter, that there was some kind of reproductive virus going on. However, I don't believe that's the case. Um, the piglets that she had were born weak and there seemed to be a lot of like clotting and blood in the umbilical cords. And a lot of them already had broken umbilical cords when they were born. So I'm thinking maybe oxygen deprivation that caused some weakness. I spent a lot of time out here in the first few days with those babies trying to get them to nurse, trying to get them latched on to mom and make sure they had colostrum, but it was kind of to no avail. So these five that are left are, you know, the strongest of the bunch, the survival of the fittest with pigs, I find. So these guys are doing really well, growing super good. They're all healthy, nice big beefy little piglets, nice porkers. So even though she had a smaller litter, the ones that she did have ended up being really nice. So that's good. And hopefully if we give her a second chance here that she will do a better job or, or whatever we had happen with the first litter won't happen again. 
That's my hope anyway. Nothing really goes perfectly when you're breeding livestock, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what we have for babies on the homestead currently. Like I said, we're expecting a calf. We're expecting a foal. We are expecting a litter of puppies. We're expecting some more piglets. And I have eggs in the incubator that are going to hatch in about three weeks. So pretty soon we're going to have chicks around here as well. So lots of babies on the Burnt River Ranch <laughs> this year. But it's good. I'm excited. I feel like things are going a little better this year than they did last year. That's for sure. So thanks for tuning in, guys. And take care.